Welcome back everyone. Today I'm working on a 2008 Yaris uh, 1.5 liter engine. Um, came in with a PO171 fuel system lean code and I already started diagnosing this. Um, I had originally thought I'd be looking for a mass airflow sensor but I pulled it out and it was clean so I wanted to bring you guys up to speed and show you um, show, show you my diagnostic process for this. So I was in Staten Island hanging out with a bunch of other YouTubers uh, learning a learning bunch of different things, hanging out, talking, and we were talking about Toyota fuel trims and how injectors can be so problematic for a lot of technicians because they, they have trouble diagnosing them. So I'm going to show you my process anytime I'm looking at fuel fueling issues for fuel trims. Um, but I'm going to start with this scan tool. So if you look at my long-term fuel trim at idle, you see it's about 12.5%. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rev this up. And you see it's now at 21, 22, 22%. Just that data alone instantly tells me I'm not looking for a vacuum leak. I'm looking at some type of fueling issue, whether it be uh, bad gas, water in the gas, bad fuel injectors, low fuel pressure, or... Uh, maybe a dirty mass airflow sensor but like I said I already checked that but just raising the load of the engine and seeing that the fuel trims get worse instantly tells me it's not a vacuum leak so I'm gonna show you guys how I go about testing this fuel system first thing I'm gonna do the first thing I'm gonna do is check my fuel pressure and while I'm doing that I'm also going to grab a fuel sample because I've been burnt too many times in the past not grabbing fuel samples so I'm gonna do that I'm using the WPS for fuel pressure, I want to show a bunch of Toyota techs who just recently received the WPS how valuable the tool can be. So I'm using the WPS for um, for for my fuel, and you'll see how I go about using that. But take you outside and show you my process. So I have the WPS 500 on range one uh, teed into this fuel line. Uh, this way, I can get my fuel pressure. I'm using this because I don't have anything accurate enough to do a fuel injector balance test if I go down that route. And I can actually use the scope while doing an injector balance test to get extremely accurate numbers. But while it's running, I also want to get a fuel sample just to make sure there's no ethanol or water in this fuel. I've been burned plenty of times uh, not checking. So I learned to check it pretty early in my diagnostics. So I have my uh, graduated cylinder, I think that's what it's called. There is a line that you add water to. Then there's another line that you add gasoline to. Do a little shake. And uh, once it settles, I'll be able to tell how much water or how much ethanol is in this fuel. But in the meantime, I am going to show my fuel pressures that I'm running. As you guys can tell, I'm running right around 47 PSI, um, which is good for this car. So I'm going to go back, check that fuel now that the water seems to have settled out of it. And if that's good, I'm going to show you how I do an injector balance test. It's hard to show on camera, but I'm right around 10% ethanol content, um, which is good. So now I'm going to show you my injector balance test. So I'm going to be using this uh, injector pulse tool. I'm going to post a link to this in the description because it's actually really cheap and it's an amazing deal. I've been using it for a couple years now to diagnose these injector issues. So uh, check them for a link in the description. It's about 27 to 35 bucks if I remember correctly. What you do is you hook this up to the battery. You hook this up to the battery um, and you hook this up to the injector. And this will pulse the injector a set amount of times and it will do it evenly. So I can pulse all four injectors, um, watch the pressure drop in fuel and see if one of them's clogged or if one of them is flowing additional fuel. So. Go in, 
disconnect all of my fuel injectors. Get this hooked up to the battery. I'm going to change this um, to mode 3. Just plug this directly into cylinder 1. I'm also going to use the Diagon to turn on and off the fuel pump between each each cylinder. So if so, before I check injector one, I'm going to turn the pump on and then off. And I'm actually going to set a cursor to where the fuel pressure drops down to once I turn the fuel pump off. Then I'm going to use the pulse tool. I'm going to pulse this injector, and then I'm going to use another cursor to see where it drops down to. And then I'm going. Then I'll be able to easily compare all four injectors. I'm going to turn the fuel pump on. You should be able to see on the screen. Turn it off. You see it drops down to about right here. Right. Turn it on again just to make sure. Turn it off. We're going to pulse cylinder one. Move this cursor down. Turn the pump on again. We're going to move this over to cylinder two. Turn it off. When it hits that cursor, it'll pulse the injector. Move this over to cylinder three. Turn the fuel pump on. Turn the fuel pump off. Pulse the injector. And last but not least, I'm going to turn the fuel pump on again. Turn it off and pulse the injector. I'm going to pause this wave. I'm going to zoom in on this. Now this was the fuel. This was the fuel pressure drop for cylinder one. This was the fuel pressure drop for cylinder. Well, this was the fuel pressure drop from cylinder one. This is when I turned the pump back on. This is where I turned the pump off, and this is when I started pulsing cylinder two. This fuel pressure drop for cylinder two. Then I turned the pump on, shut the pump off. This was my drop for cylinder three. So cylinder three is substantially less than the other three cylinders. But if you do notice, uh, cylinder four is actually my biggest drop. So that may be the one that's best. Honestly, they may, three of the four may be bad. The difference between them. So. The difference between cylinder four and cylinder three is right around two PSI. So I'm going to call injectors because I'm pretty sure these injectors are not flowing enough. And uh, see if the customer wants to do it. Also, overall, these are flowing roughly between 13 and 16 PSI when I turn this on, just to give you guys a rough estimate of, of um, what these flow, and then we'll be able to check them afterwards. All right, guys, I came in early this morning. I installed the fuel injectors. Look at my long term. Now, this is just at idle. It did get worse uh, when you rev it up, so... So my long term and my short term. So my short term is at negative 11. 
my long term is at positive 10 uh, I'll rev this up see my long term is about 14 15 my short term is about negative 9 negative 10 so once this is all done correcting I'm gonna be right around 0% for my fuel trims so I just wanted to show you all the fix um, I hope this helps a lot of guys out I know I know a lot of techs are getting stumped with these fuel injectors causing lean issues on, on these Toyotas so do hope it helps um, make sure you guys go and grab that uh, injector pulse tool I'm gonna have a link in the description these things are almost impossible to truly diagnose without that tool and it's 27 to 35 bucks so it's well worth the investment um, also representing Corey at SNA Auto today go check out his channel he actually has a video uh, he posted from uh, the meetup in Staten Island with all of the YouTube creators and uh, a couple instructors there so go check out his channel he has a link from the Staten Island meetup where this actually video came to be when I was talking to all those guys about how I diagnose uh, lean conditions caused by injectors on Toyota so so go check out his video from the Staten Island meetup gonna be posting a couple more videos I have I have a lot of footage to edit I just can't find time to edit it but uh, until next time catch you later